After the Lord was baptized, the heavens were opened and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove and the voice of the Father thundered, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. This morning's readings can be found in the Gather Book, page 902, and the Gospel can be found 900. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain the rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by a strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. O oh, Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory. 
robed in light as with a cloak. You have spread out the heavens like a tent cloth. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. You have constructed your palace upon the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You travel on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flaming fire your ministers. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. The sea also, great and wide, in which are schools without number of living things, both small and great. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. They look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the feast of the baptism of the Lord, and guess who signed up to get baptized at the Sunday 7.30 a.m. Mass, or at this gathering in the desert? Jesus himself is being baptized in water. You might wonder, hey, why is Jesus being baptized? Why did Jesus have to sign up for baptism? And if he's really a parishioner of this church, is he really a parishioner of this church where he's getting baptized? 
who were his godparents? Is there going to be some kind of a party afterwards? What should I wear? These are the, some of the questions we ask about baptisms and christenings, because these are the questions we would ask if, if we were invited to the baptism or the christening of a child, of a baby belonging to a friend or family member. We refer to baptism as one of the seven sacraments of the church. A sacrament, a sacrament is defined as the visible sign of an invisible reality. So for example, we say that marriage or matrimony is a sacrament with a visible and audible sign, a tangible sign. What is the visu- visible or audible sign of, of, of matrimony, of marriage? It is the vow, I do. I promise to love you in good times and in bad, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. I do is the visible sign. I once attended a wedding where the groom had inscribed on the soles of his shoes the words, I do, so that when he knelt down and his, the soles of his shoes faced the congregation, everybody could see those words, I do. That's the outward reality. But marriage is more than simply writing I do or saying I do. It's living this I do, living it invisibly behind the scenes in good times and in bad, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. That's the invisible reality of the sacrament of matrimony. And baptism is a, is a sacrament with a visible sign and an invisible reality. I'd like to touch on three visible signs in baptism which relate to invisible realities. Jesus himself is baptized so that he can be immersed, plunged into our human life. Jesus does not get baptized in order to be blessed by the water or to be blessed by John the Baptist. Jesus gets baptized in order to bless the water and in order to bless John the Baptist and to bless all of us. So there's three things that happen in this baptism Bible reading, and all of them relate to some invisible reality of baptism. For example, we cannot see the forgiveness of God, but we can own the forgiveness of God, we can receive the forgiveness of God, we can be blessed by the forgiveness of God. These are the three outward signs. There's water, there's worthiness, and there's wildfire. Fire. I had to say wildfire because I, I needed a W word, okay? Water, worthiness, and wildfire. And I'd like to connect these of them with the baptismal vows or the renunciations we, set, we make. We make in preparation for baptism. There's an act of renouncing what is harmful uh, and rejecting what is harmful to accept God's help. So first, the water, the H2O, the water. Have you ever tried to be the photographer at a baptism? Have you ever tried to use your camera to capture that moment of baptism? If so, you've tried to capture the precise moment when the deacon or priest pours the water over the child's head. You are interested to note exactly how this child will react to receive the water. Will the child receive the water calmly or out of control? The child who, even the child who is outwardly calm is in some way shocked or surprised by the pouring of the water. Going into water has a similar effect on us. Imagine you're going to the beach. Not today you're going to the beach, but you're going to the beach, and you perhaps you don't want to be immersed all at once. You want to wade into the water gradually. The pouring of water tells us something about the all-encompassing and instantaneous nature of forgiveness that is God's power to forgive. That's how it happens. But sometimes we postpone forgiveness or we postpone repentance. Have you ever postponed or procrastinated about admitting you were wrong to somebody, to another person? And then you're surprised when you did perhaps admit you were wrong how fast the moment went by. 
Forgiveness is something we sometimes put off. We sometimes we put off forgiving other people. Perhaps we fear that forgiveness is about letting somebody get away with something. But forgiveness is not about letting a person get away with something, but to remember that God cares about our suffering and he wants us to forgive others and he wants us to get over things even rapidly. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. At the same time, God does not want us to suffer any longer than is necessary. So forgiveness, forgiving, or receiving mercy is meant to free us from suffering immediately. It may take us time, years to live out this forgiveness, but it starts right away. Baptismal water symbolizes forgiveness. It symbolizes this vow to renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God. That's the first renunciation. I renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God. Baptismal water symbolizes forgiveness and the freedom to live rightly. The second one is worthiness. Am I worthy? Are you worthy to be baptized? The answer is complicated. We proclaim at every mass before receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Though we are unworthy due to our sinful nature, the Lord wants to help us to grow closer to him each day. John the Baptist says in the gospel today, I am unworthy to untie his sandals, the sandals of Jesus, but Jesus submits to John's baptism in the Jordan River. Worthiness also brings up the question of <clears throat> forgiveness or receiving mercy. God does not want to forgive us because we are worthy or because we are good, but because we have repented. Think about someone you have been able to forgive or someone who has forgiven you from his or her heart. Outwardly or materially, you are not, I am not worthy of forgiveness. We don't receive forgiveness because we have merited it, the forgiveness. Forgiveness is given to us even when we are unworthy. This is written in Paul's letters. He says, for God still loved us, God loved us so much that while we were still in our sins, Jesus died for us. The second baptismal promise asks, do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? We are called to renounce evil, knowing that evil, dishonesty, many forms of evil may be tempting, lying may even be tempting, but once we have accepted God's word in Christ, such things are beneath our dignity. We may not be, we have to kind of say we're not worthy of such things, we are worthy in a different way. Baptism is about forgiveness and a new type of worthiness. Third, the wildfire. Baptism is about fire and about wildfire. I guess I had, I, in other words, I had to say wildfire for the W thing. Baptism is about a wildfire. It's a good wildfire. We read about a lot of bad wildfires in Australia, in Colorado, in California. We read about all these wildfires that burn for weeks and months out of control, causing billions in property damage and do untold damage and take the lives of others. These wildfires are bad. But there is in the natural world a sense in which wildfires are good because the fire burns up on its own dead branches, leaves, and the fire can actually restore the environment. Wildfire is connected to baptism in that it is also meant to restore, to clean up, to purify our lives, and not just in a superficial way. It is connected to this baptism renunciation. Do you reject Satan, the author and prince of sin? Satan, the evil spirit, of course, has a different fire in mind for you and me. But baptism and the wildfire of the Holy Spirit is meant to draw us closer to God, not just in ways we can see, but in invisible ways, that there is an invisible reality in the water, in the worthiness, and in the wildfire of this sacrament.
our profession of faith, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ is the joy of all those who look for his coming. Let us look to him and pray. That the good news of the three kings may help us to recognize God's salvation for all people and nations, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intercession of Our Lady of Lords for healing and strength for all those who suffer in illness, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who are hungry and homeless, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal rest of our beloved deceased, Robert Ponte, Thomas Quigley, John Coons, Javier Vargas Herrera, and for all whom we remember in our parish book of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the people of our parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in the silence of our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. There are two collections today. We thank you for your generosity in the first collection and the second collection.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you have revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ our Lord. This is an important announcement about the New Jersey State Legislature. On January 6th, a few days ago, the New Jersey State Legislature advanced um, the Reproductive Freedom Act. This new legislation would codify in state law the right to abortion through all nine months of pregnancy, and the bill will be voted on tomorrow, Monday, January 10th, by the Senate and the Assembly. We invite you to go to the website of the Archdiocese of Newark or to the New Jersey Catholic Conference website at njcatholic.org um, to contact your Senate and Assembly representatives. I can also give you the information about how to contact your Senate and Assembly representatives. Some of you got an email from me about this. And on this Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, we recall that both John and Jesus were unborn children in their mother's womb. Um, and we pray for the, the blessing of all children and families. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended.